What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're for episode 11 of the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters Dynasty. Our custom created dynasty here at NCAA 14. College football revamped. Where today we're going to go through the offseason. We're going to have coaching changes. We already saw our defensive coordinator get poached by San Diego State to become the new head coach. We're going to look at players leaving. We're going to look at our own custom transfer portal minigame, which I'm certain is going to make me be even more cranky and angry than I am right now. Because mere minutes ago... Today's plan was to upload episode 45 of the Arizona Cardinals Dynasty, where we are coming off a Super Bowl win, undefeated season, looking to continue our undefeated streak with a doubleheader, trying to get wins 21 and 22 of that win streak. And in that first game, it just kept crashing. I don't know why. It does not make any sense why it was doing that. It's not an online franchise. Show me no sir. But I was up multiple scores, 27 to 9, 24 to 10, different times. Every time it would disconnect, it would reset me. So literally, things were said. Cuss where I almost wanted to like just keep that one clip of me and just put it up on Twitter because it was pretty funny. I lost my mind. But I just said, you know what? We'll try again tomorrow. Maybe the game will work better for me. And we're, you know what? We're going to go Hollywood Tech. Because you know who doesn't let us down? Tito Williams and Hollywood Tech. And this goddamn mod crashes less than a fully fledged, ready to go Madden game, which is. It is what it is. So here's what we are going to do. We're going to look at the first stage here of players leaving. This is our, our class here. No one's going to the league. We're still waiting for our first ever drafted player. Uh, Julius Rich, in terms of base rating, is the highest rated player we're losing. But in terms of meaningfulness, impactfulness, Vlad Gilchrist. Who we, we gave him his flowers in the last episode. 90 total tackles, 13 TFLs, 5 sacks, pick, which was a pick 6, 8 PBUs. He's been a great servant to our defense, our underrated defense. And I think... For how bad our run defense is, for how much we can usually pinpoint the linebackers, he's been the most reliable. We're going to be sad to see him go. Also, before we go further, if you if you somehow are watching this and didn't watch the last episode, go watch it. I don't know if we'll ever top the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl finish that we had. Like that's probably right now. That is now the benchmark of gameplay for this series. Go check that out. Not surprisingly, we have no one drafted, and it just puts. More pressure on these guys as they bust their ass here as the offseason training programs begin. Who is going to be the first ever player drafted by the NFL? Look at the incomings. This is before the storm hits. The incomings of transfers. We got Dave Crosby, middle linebacker from Oklahoma. 61 overall. Ugh. I mean, at this point, that's still not bad for our team. Like, you can be a nice depth. You can trip it on special teams. Sure, we'll welcome you aboard, buddy. We got John Butler, the running back, freshman from Kentucky, 70 overall. Pretty much anyone, 70 overall or, or above, we're going to welcome you to the team. Uh, he looks pretty average. 64 carrying for a running back, 81 acceleration. Uh, okay. And the big get is Corey Martin out of K-State, 5'11", 217. Very undersized linebacker. Only 75. We're just getting – these guys are – all due respect, I mean, I look at it, I'll tell you right now, the 74 power move, 75 finesse move, maybe we move you to, I don't even know, D-end, 511, 217 D-end, that, that kind of is on brand. Five TFLs, a sack and a half as a true freshman for K-State. All right, maybe there's something there. Obviously, all these guys going to sit out a year because it's the old transfer rules. All right, you know, not, not great, but not the end of the world. On the final day of recruiting, we were able to pull a 70 overall tight end prospect athlete, Kyle Hills. I mean, yes, push comes to shove. We'll take the one that's three points better. So here's a look at our final recruiting class. Kyle Hills projected to be a tight end. We got Ben Jones. Finally, we can kick field goals. 79 overall, which it also might be a little embarrassing saying he's probably our highest rated player next year. Classic Oakland Raiders. Back in the mid-2000s in Madden, where your best players are your kicker and punter. Uh, rest of the, you know, again, this wasn't my favorite recruiting class. We definitely need to probably have a discussion about opening things up to not three-star. Because right now, obviously, we have severe limitations. If you're getting overall players, it's athletes only, three stars or below. If we're looking at kickers, we're looking at offensive linemen, if we're going to be looking at fullbacks, they all have to be sorted by their fast 40-yard dash time. And we deal with the top 10 prospects that also, within those top 10 40-yard dash, are three-star and below. I think we need to discuss what... Do we need to achieve as a team to bump it up to four-star? And I'm not saying that we need to get to a spot where we can recruit everyone four-star and under. Obviously, that will probably happen. But I think opening things up for this next recruiting class 
to have a couple for like maybe we make we can recruit four like x an x amount of four star recruits how do we determine what that x is i feel like there should be something based off of performance i feel like i don't know if you could tie it to your wins i don't know if you could tie it to i mean we won the goddamn bowl game like there, there's probably somehow some way someone has a great idea a great parameter a great house rule for us to determine how we can you know approach this because you know we're, we're winning games now we're not a cupcake we're making waves we beat stanford like we're getting more eyes on this program than ever we are ahead of schedule in terms of building the brand of hollywood tech so i think we should be rewarded and stop necessarily just exclusively locking us into finding diamonds or else they're just going to be average role players so the final stage for us before we get to our own little transfer portal mayhem is uh, obviously because our parameters are mostly recruits. We got to convert them to positions, and these are the three kind of fun ones. Up first, we have the six seven two fifty Tremont Green, who we are going. His best rating appears to be. We could go on the offensive line, but our own line slowly starting to come together. I think his best value. I look at D end. Yeah, he's PB in walk in terms of base overall. Our starting D end, but Talon Wilkinson, Demar Kane. They've been reliable enough that I think they should still start. But I'm going to take him and we're going to slide him into D-tackle, which I think is going to be the best spot. And he is going to be D-tackle two right next to B.D. Wells. We then have our Jim Drew Marshall, 6'1", 236. And I thought all along we're going to make him running back. But with Chris McCool in the backfield right now, um, I feel like I'm smitten by the fact that he's an 80 overall free safety. I want that. That's a playmaker right there. 6'1", 236 safety as well. That might be like, this might be like our first draftable prospect. Last but not least, we have Shannon Wyatt. Well, I, I was just like, all right, 65 overall. 6'2", 234, unique build, but he's a 65. He's a 75 quarterback. 76 running back, if we wanted to. He's like your favorite type of athletes right here, out of nowhere. And I think, you know, where we're at, why not? Why not make him a quarterback? Take a look at our training results. Our Georgia transfer, Chaz Shambliss, who's taken over for Vlad Gilchrist, is our highest rated player, 84. We have the sophomore, 6'7", Greg Webb, up to an 82. Vince Miller, up to an 81. He's looking to regain his quarterback one status after the season-ending injury last year. Corey Martin, obviously going to have to sit out a year. Uh, due to transfer rules, he's an 80. We got uh, some nice rating there. Jeff Sanders up to a 77. Chris McCool, plus six, up to a 76. Love Bob Podolsky getting the plus five there. Yeah, he's not going to, you know, roll over here and just give up the quarterback one discussion. Chris McCool up to a 76. I just Outstanding growth and development. Lewis Hicks, our two-way player, 74. Tito Williams up plus three. What is this catching? Up to a 63. We're working. We're getting there for the best speedster in all of college football i don't know what you want to say do you want to say that he's a, a specialist i think he's better than just a pure specialist we have jared morgan a plus six we have a 73 guard jason jackson plus seven 74 center newman plus five 74 right guard nelson there 71 wilkinson up to a 66 65 for kane bd wells up to a 69 which you love to see Corey louis 73 um Jeremy McCray was productive for us as a true freshman. He's up to a 69. The secondary, Sanders, 77. Adam Hill, 73. Rodriguez, 74. 72 for Phillips. And all Kenny Nakaru getting a plus five. So very happy with a lot of that training. Hopefully, we keep all these guys. Our transfer portal is going to be incredibly simple. It's a spin the wheel that has a 50-50 chance. One of rolling, they stay and recommit to Hollywood Tech. One, it rolls... And they leave and make a jump to a bigger school. How to determine how many players are up for potential transfer. I'm going to take the amount of losses we have from the previous season as the maximum that we can potentially lose. I have four players. Our four most realistic trains. This is, this is to keep this series honest. The four guys that I think most likely off of production rating ceiling that would want to maybe see. Just that they can get that bigger NIL bag from a bigger Power 5 school. Those are the four names that I have subjected to potential transfer portalism. 
Let's hope for some good news. So what first is a Jaquiz Shack? Plenty of teams are seeing the basketball convert. Seven feet, 292 pounds. Through two seasons, learning the game of football. 905 yards, seven touchdowns. And you see a player like this, you think he's thinking that with his unique size, potentially a bigger opportunity could see him get drafted in the league. He is our first player that is considered entering the transfer portal. Will he remain a honey hunter? As you can see, the spin the wheel board, very basic. 50-50 chance, stay or go. And up first, we have Jaquiz Shack, and he has recommitted to Hollywood Tech. And I think with that profile, might have a shot, given the fact that he's also a senior, to be our first ever player drafted. You know the NFL love those basketball converts at tight end. You guys know Antonio Gates played basketball? Player number two is Chris McCool, the 99 speed and 99 acceleration running back who has led the team in touchdowns the last two years and is a career record holder in rushing yards for Hollywood Tech, career record holder in rushing touchdowns for Hollywood Tech, career record holder in receptions for Hollywood Tech. And I'm going to be honest with you, Chris McCool, probably one of my favorite players on this entire team. He has been a touchdown machine, a touch touchdown merchant. Fuck! He's going to pay me to do it. What I'm going to do, every player that we remove, I'm going to recreate them on another team. We might be able to run into them. But... There goes an all-time record holder. Goddamn NIL. Our third player is our highest rated skill position player. That is Greg Webb, the six foot seven, 225 pound sophomore wide receiver who in his freshman campaign was very productive, especially down the stretch, fitting with 479 yards, two touchdowns, and was, even though we do have Tito Williams on the team right now, and he's kind of the focal point of the offense, we are expecting Greg Webb to emerge as wide receiver one. But with the kind of development he has, the unique body type, a lot of teams are going to be sniffing around the old hen like a bunch of wolves looking at my precious chickens trying to just destroy everything we've built. So we got Greg Webb, sophomore, 82, six foot seven, just a unique body type. Let's go. That's the role we need it. If we keep him to stay, that's absolutely another guy. You got to put on here the top of the list of players that could be the first ever drafted Hollywood Honey Hunter. He's a sophomore, 82, six seven. If he stays till he's a senior... He's going to be well into the 90s. So that's a huge get for our team. But we have one more role that needs to be made. I think we all knew this was coming. I don't think he wants to leave, but I think there'd be more than enough teams around the world in college football, Power 5, top programs, natty contenders, that would want him for his return ability. He's the returner of the year, defending returner of the year, coming off an 800-yard, eight-touchdown campaign, the most iconic player that we have ever seen. Look at the return. 1,800 return yards. Five touchdowns last year. If this is blue, I'm going to be depressed. If this is transfer, I'm going to be fucking depressed. End of episode. Let's go. One take. He's gone, he's gone. If he stays, he stays. It's meant to be! I will say I might have had a little more content if we lost him. And then I could just go on an absolute tirade about NIL, the transfer portal. But at least for one more year, our star, Bell of the Ball, Tito Williams. I was already like the whole time in my head. I was like, what do you got to say? What? It, it, there's, two, there's, there's no way I self-impose this type of mechanic and not get punished by losing... My all-time record holder in touchdowns and the face of this goddamn series. What kind of rant can I manufacture right now to go above and beyond to make it a memorable rant to justify and make it a moment that can potentially compete with the loss of Tito Woods? All that ran through my head and then he's staying with the good guys. Thank God. I'm not even religious, but thank God. He's up there somewhere. He looked down. He blessed us today. Tebow did this. T-God. Whew. All right, well, the bad news is we did lose somebody. We lost 
I don't want to say he's irreplaceable, but we lost, you know, the all-time record leader in most statistical categories. And we have no insurance. John Butler, 75 overall. Obviously, slow shit. Doesn't fit the profile of what we look for a running back. He's a transfer. But 75, you're like, all right, you can survive. He has to sit out this year. He's a transfer. So we only have two running backs on the roster. We have Marion Lyle. And we got at least some speed here in Ricky Hightower, who was an athlete. He played safety, moved him to running back. Just to utilize that speed a little bit. 91 speed, 98 acceleration. But uh, we are hurting at running back. Damn. So a little preview at our schedule here. Looking to improve upon and try to seal the deal as Sunbelt champions. With all is said and done. Uh, the wiggle room comes in the first four weeks. Everything else is kind of locked in. Week seven, we have the Nerds versus Jocks. Luckily, we're able to line that one up against Stanford. Not a lot of opponents there in week 10. So we really have the first four weeks. And I like taking on the best Florida has to offer. I think the best way that we gain traction as a program is to slowly move up that ladder of Florida schools. Let's conquer that first. However, the Hurricanes and the Gators aren't available for any of these first four weeks. So we got South Florida, Florida International, the only ranked Florida team we can get is UCF and you know what taking a step back you know you compare UCF against Miami you compare them against Florida the fact that they're ranked that's probably and hopefully they're still ranked come week three they're probably our best shot to beat a ranked Florida opponent all year so a little bit easier of a schedule but the fact that Stanford's entering it at number three could be a tough one come nerds v jocks two all right so recruiting we all know the rules I can only go for three star athletes and below that's been tried tested and true when we go to positions like special teamers when we go to positions like offensive linemen guard tackle center when we go to positions like fullback so i'm sick and tired of having a 50 fullback we have to operate within the parameters of top 10 40 yard dash time and three star and under that you know recruit of an athlete per those different positions However, I opened up saying, I, I think we should be able to explore. Because look, now we're getting players that are not athletes that are interested in the team. So I think there's a lot of ways we could go with this. One way could be, you know, expanding off of just going for athlete positions only. And we can go with the same parameter. Like if they look like an athlete at a position, we could. I don't want to implement that this year. We could always keep refining it. And feel free to throw any and all feedback for how we can continually evolve our recruiting process to get funner players as our program grows as well as having house rules so that challenge is still there but for this year because i do think we should be deserved you know going into year three to be able to have four star recruits and open it up i feel like the fairest way to do it is if we are on their interest we have greg london who has us in his top teams top five top six whatever it is he is going to be a four-star recruit we can go after. As long as we are making the interest parameters. We got George Conley, four-star recruit running back, 4-4-8 four, four, speed. We are in his top team. I think I think it only goes up to six. So we got two four-stars right there. We could go three if we really want to. I don't want to invest that much at the running back spot. I think that's just the easiest way right now to determine if we can go four-star. But absolutely, guys, definitely look for feedback for how we can continue to evolve our recruiting. All right, we have our initial big board. We got 26 recruits. We have four fullback, tackle, guard, and center, as well as punter. All those guys are top 10 in terms of 40-yard dash, so they fit our parameters. The rest are all athletes, excluding our four-star recruit in Jorge Conley and our four-star recruit here in Greg London, who I'm going to make them the first two players we scout just to see is their full goal. I'm telling you right now, like, look, pass. I don't even want to, you know, add this new rule for you. Your butt cheeks. What about Mr. Conley? All right, a little bit better. Super slow. I'll say that for, for a big-time recruit, but I'm glad that he's interested in the program. So I want to scout all three tackles just to see if there's a weak link that we can kind of, whoa, that we can kind of shave off our recruiting board. And I'm going to go and keep the one that has 90 acceleration. So thank you very much, Mr. Allen. You're gone. I also had a curiosity. This is stupid. To, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save the fullback. He's an 80 overall. Hell, he might be our starting running back. We might, and I'm not going to cheese this. I already thought about it because there's a couple three-star fullbacks that are in the 80s. I was like, did I just get these fullbacks? And then, because this guy is 4-5 speed and move him into running back. That's kind of cheesing the system. But I will say, 
That doesn't mean that I can't just exclusively run with the fullback. You know, shout out not the expert, implement a little bit that to the offense. So I think it would be a waste uh, for these solo players. Like we have one fullback. We only have two guards, one center, one party. Don't need to fully scout those guys because we're still going to likely target them anyways because we lack depth at that position. So I think we just go on a run here for some of these athletes and see how it all. So we have Dan Setzer, 73. He goes up to a 74. You got Dominic Jones. I mean, all I want to try to do, obviously people have different approaches to this. Hell yeah, you want to find as many diamonds as possible. I want to find the duds because we don't, I don't want to go into this process with 24 freaking recruits. It's easier to kind of shave off, trim some of the fat here, get rid of the guys that aren't going to be anything special, and we don't have to invest any points into them. So we're not really finding out a whole lot here. I am... Um, I mean, some of the lower end recruits, like 67, considering there's such a log jam, I think anyone that's like under 60, that, that should be the cutoff right now. If you're 67 or under, unless you have like something that's standing out about you. This guy here looks like he'd be like a D-end. George Tucker, eh. Get off me. Get off here. What about you, Rodney Davis? You have 90 acceleration at six. So you're probably going to be an offensive lineman. Could be a tight end. But we'll keep you there. I will, you can always use a little bit more O-line depth. But hey, not bad. How many gems did we end up getting? One, two. Ben Battle's a gem. 6'5", 217. 91 speed, 90 acceleration, 94 jumping. 84, like, looks like he can play a little bit of DB. Can play wide receiver. 82 route running, 74 catching. All right. Looks like a beast. Then we have another gem down here a little bit. I mean, P Jeff Patterson, 76. That's, all, that's much of a gem. When we find these guys that are three-star, they're almost always Juco players, which is fine. Uh, he's likely going to be an offensive or defensive lineman at 6'6", 275. But we had another gem down here in... Didn't we? Right here. Glenn Allen. Plus seven for an offensive... And he's not a Juco. He's straight up a diamond to the rough. That's the kind of player we need to find right there. So now we have our board in place. It is now week one. We have our buy. So we can focus a little bit more here on the rest of the recruits. I'm kind of still fine-tuning the list a little bit. Saw where we landed for some of them. Anyone that was over 700 points, I, I took them off the board. But we have, after that spending an initial 1,000 to kind of scout everyone, we weren't able to scout every single player. So I was able to kind of finish out the linemen. Our 80 fullback, unfortunately, takes a hit, but still pretty decent. I like the, you know, I don't love the fact that we're 500 and we're number nine on his list. We'll throw him a scholarship. But you look at, the, I mean, utility. Absolute utility player. The run block is not brutal. Impact could be higher. But look at the catching and route running. He could be a weapon. But the best thing we found out was Dan Lloyd at guard. Eight gem recruit. A 79 high school player. So he immediately comes one of our top targets. 85 pass block, 79 run, 78 impact block, 89 acceleration, 89 strength, 80 agility. This guy is a beast. Absolute monster. So after trimming the fat of our initial class, we got it down to 13 recruits that we really want to focus on. Uh, and obviously because this initial way before we get to see the dust settle, I really got to utilize the bonus points uh, to maximize our 6,500. Clearly you want to max out the big dogs. Ben Battle, 75. We'll go max Trey Williams. He's only 72, but at 6'4", he's also like the fastest player straight up we have with 90 speed, 90 acceleration. So I want to bring him in. We got Patterson, 76, the Juco. That would be a big get for the defensive line. Dan Lloyd, clearly our, our top target as well was Glenn Allen because until we have an elite offensive line, that still is the biggest thing I want to continue to prioritize. So that's why they're getting most of the love with the 700 points. And I will sneak this in the video here, and obviously I'm going to plug it maybe a little more. Something that's always been done for people that make NCAA series is offering a Patreon. Because I do have a Patreon. It's a great way to go above and beyond to support the channel. Which, outside of really our fantasy league, there's not a whole lot extra value outside of just, hey, if you want to help me out and enjoy what I watch, the Patreon's a good way because I don't stream, I don't do tips and stuff like that. Um, if you guys would want me to you know, come up with something where if by supporting the Patreon... You can get prospects. I don't know how I want to do it. I, I thought the easiest way would just be once this recruiting class comes in, I'll just change their names to whoever you guys want to see. But they, I don't know. Is that the best way to do it? Like, would you like how do other you how do other YouTubers usually implement that? Because one way, the way I used to do it was you can uh, modify like twenty recruits before you generate your board. But I don't want to do that and then have these guys that you guys are supporting Patreon for like I have no chance in hell of recruiting them. So then the only other thing that makes sense of getting your guys on the team 
is just changing and modifying the recruits as we land them. But would that cause any sort of disconnect? Like if Jorge Conley, our four-star, ends up being a patron, we just change his name entirely to someone who ever wants to support the channel. Like, do you lose some immersion if we do that? Like, you could also look at, you know, some of the players that get the walk-ons that get added to your team. But then that's RNG. You never know how many walk-ons you get. So if I have 10 people that want to get prospects here via NCAA and I only get seven walk-ons, you know, then some people are left holding the bag. I don't know, but if you guys want to see something like that, I can definitely fine-tune it. I know it's a little bit later in the video, so I'll probably start the next episode talking about it. Uh, or maybe I'll throw this in the beginning of the video, but it's something that I'm always, you know, I'm not necessarily, honestly, I'm, I'm bringing that up to more so add value to people that are supporting my Patreon versus trying to drive more people towards it. But it is always something that I, I think that is cool to see, and cool to have in an NCAA series. So if that is something you guys want to see, let me know in the comments below. So because we had a buy, really the only news is kind of seeing where we moved up for some of these players. And I love the fact that we have taken the lead on a lot of our top targets, which is great. Is anyone, I'll tell you right now, we're only a thousand off of Malkin Allen. So you are, we'll take those points and put them elsewhere. Ooh, all right, let's, well, we got 1,200 points to 1,100 points to reallocate. Wish we had 1,200. It's now week two, our first game of our third season of existence, and we have South Florida. Good little opener to try and test ourselves. Corso is on the bandwagon. We're no longer D's across the board. C minus overall, a C offense, a C minus defense. But we had a lot of decisions on how we were going to line up week one with our depth chart. We have competitions at quarterback. Who should be our starter? We got to figure out who the hell can replace Chris McCool at running back, amongst other spots. So here's kind of look at where I'm at with our depth chart. I'm thinking for quarterback, Bob Podolsky has a unique set of skills, but Vince Miller was giving us the big epic wins last year. Vince Miller led us in the Jocks vs. Nerds win over Stanford. He had us within a score of beating ranked Miami, and I don't feel it sets a healthy precedent for a player to lose their starting spot due to injury. I think that's something that we want to hold true. Yeah, he does have the 99 throw power that Bob Podolsky has, but he has like 20 more throw accuracy. So I think, I think it's fair to say that he's going to be our starter, but he's going to be on maybe a little bit of a shorter lease. If he starts to struggle, we know Bob Podolsky down the stretch. He epic. Hail Mary touchdown to win us our first ever bowl game. That should at least keep him in conversation that if Miller starts to suck, we could easily pivot to Podolsky. And running back's interesting. Shannon Wyatt, who is our surprising quarterback. 70, went from a 65 athlete to a 75. He actually has like the best stats. He doesn't have the speed, the crease cool speed. We have that in high tower. We'll kind of use here as a change of pace back with his 91 speed, 98 acceleration. But when I kind of broke down, it's just an all out monster. Like, this is a player that you do see often in college. The, the hybrid quarterback, use him as a running back. But 6'2", 234, 86 speed, 76 strength. Like, he just leads in so many categories. Now, not the fastest. Absolute butt cheeks with 25 awareness. But he has 79 break tackle. He has 85 trucking. 85, like, a, like an all-out power back. And on top of that, 81 spin move, 85 juke move. Now, the carrying is not the best. But the stats are, you know, he can catch the football, 62 catching at the backfield. So I think it's going to be a work in progress to figure out who deserves to be our starting running back. But I think we start with the power option of Wyatt, and then we can look at, you know, sprinkling in a little bit more speed, a little bit more traditional runners in as well. Wide receiver room, Tito Williams still deserves to be wide receiver one. We have Greg Webb, 6'7", 82. We have Alexander, 79, 6'5", with 93 speed. Lewis Hicks, two-way player, plays a little wide receiver, plays a little corner for us as well. Shalvaudi, who's just, I don't know how he's a 78 with that kind of speed, but you gotta work your way up and we'll round up with Unka Gems as wide receiver six. Hills, the freshman, comes in with a higher rating, but you know, he's a, he's our starter. He's a senior. We're not gonna we're gonna do right by him. He hasn't done anything to lose his spot, and we got two options there now at tight end. I only have a somewhat competent offensive line. 74 at tackle, 73 at guard, 74 at center, 74 at guard, 76 at tackle so maybe we can get a little bit of run game going defensive line also remains the same with the record holder in sacks and talon wilkinson to mark kane they are a great one-two punch tremont green our juco transfer 74 is going to start alongside bd wells who has a whole lot of production louis made some plays for us last year 73 shambles the georgia transfer 84 overall excited to see what he can do after sitting out all of last year and we have McCray was an impact playmaker as a true freshman 
rounding out the uh, the linebacker room. Sanders 77, Hill 73, and our two-way player in Hicks line up as our starters at corner with Drew Marshall, the freshman, 80 overall. Outstanding rating. Outstanding value. Starting there in the secondary alongside Travis Phillips with Ben Jones, our freshman kicker, and Kenny Dunkaroo, our junior punter, rounding out the special teams with, of course, I'll tell you right now, the fact that this came in. Someone auto-set not having Tito Williams as a that We already fired him. It's already been fired. It's already been dealt with. With that, welcome to the season opener and last year's season opener. We had 50 people in the stands. That is a packed house. That is how quickly Hollywood Tech is taking over the world at college football, baby. We'll bring it live. For better or for worse, opening kickoff. He was in the portal. He recommitted so he can do things. Oh! oh, like that. We were one tackle away from a season opening house call. Let's go big dog. Wyatt, different type, going from 99 speed, 99 acceleration of Chris McCool to a guy that certainly has not that amount of speed. It's going to be interesting to see. But we have a much better offensive line. And offensive line, that's the biggest bummer, I think. At the end of the day, yeah, we lost historic Chris McCool. But we never got to see him behind like a decent offensive line. And we have a somewhat respectable line right now. Third and five. They go to the air here. Love to get this to Shaq or Webb. Quick completion. Easy throw. High percentage. What do we do? Do we go for this? It's a home opener. I'm going to go slants. I want to at least see what it looks like. If we got a favorable matchup, we might go for this. If not, I have no problem burning a timeout. They are jamming in the middle of the field there. I'll, we'll punt it. I need a little bit softer middle of the field. Possession, trying to make it, you know, make it at least feel like the right call that we punted it. We got Lewis Hicks, corner blitz. You know, he wants to be out there catching passing tuds as well. We bring the heat. That is a wide. Oh, my God. That needs to be punished. Brutal drop. All right. And again, first deep pass. We forget that Vince Williams does not have the 99 throw power of Big Bob Podolsky. Oh, there you go. And we get immediately punished as we should have. That was a horrific interception. All right. Glad to see the offense came to play today. Again, very short lease for the quarterback. And I'm not impressed. Nope. Fuck it. Nope. Get your ass on the bench. You pussy. You suck. What did you even work on all offseason? All right. Can we bend out break? We got the small bailout on the missed extra point on their first touchdown. We really need the defense here to step up. Oh, that might be enough for them to go for it. I mean, they kick the field goal, they go up two scores. Play it safe. Also, if we can find a way to bend out, break, get the turnover here. Bob Podolsky coming back. QB1. We'll see if that sparks. Maybe, maybe South Florida is just that good. But, man, oh, man, we are falling flat. After getting the wins of the transfer portal spins... I thought this team would show up with a little more juice, but I guess the loss of Chris McCool really affecting the morale here. Like these guys apparently didn't work at all on the playbook. Game plan for week one. Two turnovers. Defense couldn't stop a fucking runny nose. Drop pick on the first drive. We are getting appropriately spanked right now. Bob Podolsky sacked from behind. Love it. Gonna close her eyes and throw it to X. You know it. Third and 22. We're going for it. This point. Fuck it. What do we got to lose? Let's go. Uh, honestly, we're running back. Same play. Middle slant. Hicks at right bumper could be a sneaky play. 
Greg Webb as well. Can I restart this? Can I restart this game? Can I? Huh? Holy f I'm so- I gotta ap just apologize. This is embarrassing. And I'm very like- the fact that I went from three hours ago playing Madden and- and winning, but the game kept resetting. Like, very frustrating gameplay experience. Behind the scenes. You guys will never see that. To this? Like, I just- I want to take the rest of the week off. Honestly, I don't want to play anything football games. This is, uh, like stomping on my nuts. Over and over and over. Let's go, baby! Love the Blitz pickup. Love how quickly my guys get out of the routes. We're going for it. I've never, I didn't, I never foresaw waving the white flag and simming out the season opener, but we're close, baby. My team is earning that right, right now. All righty, fellas, let's go. Green, green, kicker ready. Boom, we throw it up to the 6 7, and he drops it. Yeah. Well, we'll give up one more touchdown. We can sim out the rest of this game and forget it ever happened. I mean, we we always have. I don't think we've had an episode yet. We've had, what, three season openers, episodes, and every one. We've had a fucking embarrassing loss. Last year, what was it? Florida, and then we lost to FCS, and then we got hot. This year, getting smacked by a joke of a program. There's no other way to put it. Oh, yeah. There we go, fellas. Just let them score at this point. Let's get it over with. Rip the bandit off. Enjoy that we had the good of the offseason. And then a humble reminder that every time we start feeling, whoa, man, are we are we going to think about winning the Natty? Winning, not the Natty, but winning the Sun Belt and moving to a bigger conference? You have a game like this where literally your team looks like JV scrubs. Like this team might as well be a bunch of North Koreans. Never, never seen the sport of football before. No professional aspirations. That's what I'm seeing here. Even though we got a bunch of big nine recruits, shiny new pieces that should be contributing, stepping up. Oh, there you go. Great tackle there. Third and two blitz. Honestly, I'm checked out. I'm hoping they score and we can just take the win as the off season. Recollect ourselves. Oh my god, we get uh, a little bit of pre uh, Go for it, man. You ever see Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair? Where Shawn Michaels just had to put him out of his misery. With the sweet chin music. Tuned up the band. That's what I am right now on this goal line. I'm old Ric Flair. Just bobbling out there. Saying, do it. Just do it. Just put me out of my misery. Alrighty, there we go, fellas. There's our season opener. It's, we're not scoring any points. Um, well, you know. Oh, wow, a touchdown. And then we give up a touchdown. There's just a lot of Podolski there going back and forth. I mean, we just got to go back to the drawing board. There's, there's nothing. This, this is one of those games you burn the tape. It um, Unless South Florida is like a sleeping juggernaut. Like they end up ranked undefeated, which given what I saw here. This might be the greatest football team I've ever seen. Because we couldn't complete a pass. We couldn't block. We couldn't run. We couldn't stop the run. We couldn't stop the pass. So I'm, I'm, you know, the only way to save face on this is South Florida is a juggernaut in disguise. And uh, I'm, I'm in, just let you know right now, behind these sunglasses, I'm the most frustrated. I've been in like three months recording content for this team, given both series right now. I'm telling you that right now. This is bad. We need a complete reset. All right, with that, I'm going to go uh, lift some heavy things, pick them up, put them back down again, and load off some steam here. One of them days, man. It was one of them days. Technical difficulties. When we actually got in to go on the field and on the sticks, we get absolutely embarrassed. So we just, we need to, you know, take the wins. Tito Williams, recommitted. Jaquiz Shack, recommitted. Greg Webb, recommitted. Shout out Chris McCool for everything. We need to find someone, though, that can step up as a potential 
all-time rushing yard leader, all-time rushing touchdown leader, all-time reception leader. That is what we're trying to replace as well to find just a, find a quarterback, man. Somehow, just the immense regression of Miller. Three passes, two picks, embarrassing. No effort from the receivers to make plays. Podolsky came in. Again, the numbers look all right, but 42% completion is embarrassing. I, I just don't know. Maybe you just toss it up to a bad bad game. I mean, you look, Vince Miller should be our best. 84 throw power is on the low end. That's a noodle arm, but 85 accuracy. He has some scrambling ability as well. You look at Bob Podolsky, 99 throw power. The accuracy is getting up there a little bit. 69, but that's still probably one of the lowest if we made him our start. He would be the lowest in terms of, uh, of college quarterbacks. Or we have Shannon White, who's currently our running back. But can he go? I mean, speed athleticism's there. The awareness kind of sucks. The accuracy even more of a noodle iron. So I feel like that's, you know, we know what we, we're good at. It's the deep ball. And we only really have one quarterback that's good at the deep ball. So... I mean, until we find, uh, you know, a QB recruit with a cannon arm or get a good role in the transfer portal, I'm, I'm leaning, I'm leaning Podolsky right now. I'm ending the episode with him there, but if, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how everything breaks down. I just, the best quarterback might not be the best fit for our offense. It's kind of where I'm at. But uh, that's how we're going to wrap this one up here today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I asked for a lot of different feedback from you guys, so we'll be checking the comments. One, should we do some sort of Patreon recruiting thing? If you guys want to go support that, or if you're already on the Patreon, if you would like to see something like that, that'd be kind of cool. I'll post something probably over there as well. How should we handle recruiting? Should we be able to recruit some sort of house rule, four-star, five-star? Should we expand it a little bit? Or just you know keep that challenge of always just capping ourselves to three-star recruits. Let me know in the comment section below. If it's your first time, stop by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace. I love you. Have a good one.